Welcome once again to the Biz Live Podcast. We're recording here live from our downtown Las Vegas studios at the lovely Latin Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> My name's Mike Bendrup, and I'm with UNR Extension Small Business Education Program, and we're happy to be here with my co-host, Peter Guzman, the president of the Latin Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for having me. Today is a special day. Uh, more than, well, they're always special anytime we can sit around and talk about, you know, job creation, small business, things that are coming down the pipeline. But today, obviously, is a little extra special because we have our wonderful uh, city councilwoman, Olivia Diaz, uh, you know, one of our very own, and we're proud of her and, and just excited to be talking about small business. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia, for being here with us today. And uh, Ward 3. City of Las Vegas. I remember. I remember. So, Thank you so much, Mike. Good. Thank you so much, Peter. It's always a pleasure to be at the Latin Chamber. You're in my ward, so I know that you keep a close eye out for the community as well. And I'm Councilwoman Olivia Diaz, and I'm born and raised here in Las Vegas, but particularly in the east side. And so much like Peter, um, our stomping grounds have been this part of the city off of 28th and Cedar. Uh, that's where I was pretty much an elementary school student. And then when wow. I was in high school at Rancho High School, I my parents had the fortune to buy their forever home uh, mm -hmm. also on Eastern in Washington and that adjacency. And so um, I've been able to pretty much see the evolution of the east side of Las Vegas through my eyes, through the years uh, as a young child and teen and now woman. Um, and that's why I'm super honored and humbled that I get to represent this ward because for me, uh, you know, it's all about home being where your heart is. Mm -hmm. And this is home and this is where my passion lies in making sure that we're not forgetting this very important part of the city exactly. um, for all the children that are coming behind us. And I'm yeah. so glad she said, pointed out that this is in her ward because we're, we're very, I mean, we love our space. We've gotten offers to go relocate and we've always said, hell no. <laughs> and we take care of our building. You see how, be <laughs> you see how beautiful, you see how beautiful we keep it. We have next door is our senior center. Yeah. Uh, we have Nevada hand projects all around us. I mean, I think this is a beacon of what something really positive can look like you have a chamber amongst affordable housing a senior center you know if all the neighbors um took pride like we do it would even be better and mm -hmm. i think that's a message that the councilwoman is always saying like we have to have pride in our space as well it's it can't just be her right we can't just call her up and complain we also have to take care of our own uh, neighborhoods and and beautify them and plant trees and so that's yeah, what we try to do Thank you so much. It's much appreciated. We know that it does start with every small business owner, every um, resident who owns their own home. Um, every It takes all of us doing our part to lift our communities and make sure that they're on the up and up. And, um, you know, we don't ever want to hear the word blight or blighted yeah. communities, right? And so we're trying to make sure we're combating that at every turn. Well, and that's been a, a growing concern as our city grew. I'm, I'm, I'm a Las Vegas native too. Valley, Valley High School, I'll say that. That's so okay. We that's won't uh, hold that against you being a Viking. <laughs> just down the street, just down the street. So yeah, it, as, as our community gr kept growing, especially in the 80s and 90s, there, there started to be some of these issues that we're, we're dealing with. And, and as the, as the city had to grow and figure out how to manage, um, growth, it's, it's a tough problem. We always say this in business. It's a horrible problem to have no sales. It's also a terrible problem to have excess of sales where you don't know what to do. And we kind of had that same situation with an excess of people moving into our city. It puts a lot of strain on our services. So, um, thank you for the job that you do with the, the city council. So, Thank you. Yeah, and she Appreciate does do a great job, and I know we're going to get right into talking yeah. about some of these incredible uh, projects. Um, you know, we're we're honored to say that uh, we're having our, f you know, I'm not honored to say it's our final one there, but we've had we've held our uh, Latin Chamber golf course in her ward at the uh, golf course there um, because we're loyal and they've been members of our chamber. We think it's a beautiful golf course, and mm -hmm. it is. And so, uh, as sad as I am to see it go because of the one day that we do a golf tournament. I'm also very excited because we know what the future is. So I'd like to ask you, what is our future of East Las Vegas? And in particular, that wonderful golf course that is going to be a Picasso. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm excited about that opportunity because it's close to 100 acres of land that 
in East Las Vegas, we don't really have any open spaces or much land left. We know that we're highly um, developed already because we are probably the more mature part of Las Vegas as we've been growing as a city to the northwest. Northwest in particular, you see a lot of new housing development and projects happening there. But here in the downtown and on the east side, we're pretty established, right? And so there's very few places or pockets where you can find undeveloped um, plots of land. And so this 100 acre um, just, you know, kind of came into our lap and we we identified it as an asset that the city could partake in helping steer what the future of that could be. But it couldn't come at a better time when a lot of people are struggling to keep a roof over their heads because they're being priced out of what they're renting. Um, There's Mm -hmm. not very many other options. All of them are up there in prices um and also we know that small business is an engine and will continue to be so forever and ever it's the leader in creating jobs in our communities and we know that that space will also be a mixed use development so we're looking to bring some commercial front edge we want to bring some um, workforce training and development center aspect to it because we know that our community continuously needs advancement and opportunities to be in those higher paying jobs. If we're talking green jobs as a country, let's make sure we're training our own workforce to get to those green work. jobs so that they can in turn make the better income and then be on a better pathway. Um, and I call it just, you know, being on um, a path of opportunity um of prosperity, right? Because yeah. I think everybody wants to have more money than they need, right? Right. Exactly. I, I grew up in a family of eight. I know with one income, and I know how hard it must be right now for a family in the similar dynamics as my family, having six kids, mom staying at home with the kids, having one one sole income. I think right now what we're hearing is that dad needs to work two and three jobs to yeah. be able to yeah. afford everything to take care of their family. So I want to take the stress off of our family members and our community members and saying I can find an appropriate space to live. That's dignifying. That's going to also be energy efficient. We're, we're trying to go for all of these hot of topics. Um, we want to make sure it's lead energy efficient. We want to make sure that we add more trees to the area. We know that there the east side is experiencing in particular a heat island effect because we need Mm. more tree canopies. And so there are on so many fronts, there's so much to do. But let me just kind of put it back to the the survey we deployed because I'm a big believer that we need to take a temperature read and we need to check in with community and we shouldn't be making these decisions on a whim just because I'm the councilwoman, I have the seat. It shouldn't be what I want. It should be what we jointly want and you've done a great job at that i know carlos has been extremely involved in all the meetings i've been to one or two and and also speaking to you every time i can but uh i think it's great that you're you're getting input right you're getting input and because we know this is a one-time shot opportunity to really do it right and if we do it right there and i I know i've shared this with you then other developers are going to come in and say well let's duplicate that in East mm-hmm. Las Vegas and that could be this could be a game changer for generations absolutely um so my planning team and the smith group and um Erika Aviles and her team have been a part of the team of hosting these stakeholder meetings and pushing out the survey to the community. And so the things I wanted to highlight what we've heard so far, we've found like five themes that have resonated throughout the input we're receiving. Number one, they want us to prioritize health. Um, So they want access to better health care, safer streets and homes, and they want to see us put our best foot forward in remediating the air quality and and also limiting uh, and eliminating or combating uh, the heat island effect, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And also a big thing is to make sure that they continue to have access to fresh food because what we have sometimes in some communities um, is the struggle to just even keep a grocery keep store, a grocery store open, open yeah. in adjacency to where they live, mm-hmm. right? And so we know that that's a really important thing to health. Next thing is greener neighborhoods. That kind of ties into minimizing the heat island effect. So planting more trees to reduce the impacts of the urban heat island effect and making sure that where communities walk to school, to the grocery store, to the community center, to the closest park, I, as a child, would make that hike down Eastern all the time to the grocery store with my mother. She didn't, she to this day doesn't drive. 
And so we would walk to buy mm-hmm. what she needed um, in terms of groceries. And I know that that dynamic is still the same. Many families can't afford to have many cars. Maybe they're on one car, two cars, or those who work use the vehicles, yep. but those that stay at home don't. So how do we make sure? That ties into the third prong that we got feedback on is improving the transportation infrastructure. Because we know that in our community, 23% of the land in the East Las Vegas is public right away. So how do we hmm. make sure we maximize it as a way that people can get to and from, whether it's on the bus, on a bike, walking? So we need to make it just so much better and, and lift in that way. Um, there's this vision also from our planning team to do more mixed use. Um, in the, the olden days, we used to just kind of erect our homes And all of it was attractive homes. Increasingly, as we get more people and we're running out of land, we're going to have to go vertical and we're going to have to maximize that space. So how can we have a Cardenas on the first floor, but with maybe three, five, seven, ten flight of floors to house people, right, on the top of it. So Mm -hmm. we're definitely wanting to see how we can maximize the use of space to provide retail services and housing all in one. And then the last one is near and dear to our hearts with the focus on entrepreneurism, because we know that um, just so you know, the east side of Las Vegas is over 70 percent Latino, Hispanic. And with that, we know we are very entrepreneurial and they got money to spend in nature. But we like to establish our own businesses. We like to be like, oh, I, I make the best tamales. I make the best buñuelos. I make the best arepas. I make the best, you know, whatever it is. And so how do we create a hub and a space where we can help grow businesses, uh, make them more sophisticated, and then find them a space, hopefully, in our future commercial space um, there on Desert Pines Golf Course. So I think that there's so many things that we can be working hand in glove together to... And and imagine, you know, imagine a lot of these folks being able to work and live right there in the vicinity, right? So they maybe they don't need to all have cars and... And so I think thinking outside the box is going to be key. Um, and I know, listen, I need everybody to understand that uh, there's no question the councilwoman is going to be under pressure, is under pressure. Developers, you know, they they sometimes come at it from a pure, you know, ROI, you know, what's what? how much am I going to make at the end of this? We got to make sure we're, we're thinking outside the box and uh, because we got one shot at this. And this is an important piece to East Las Vegas, to us, to the councilwoman. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to um, seeing it evolve and hopefully creating an, a synergy of other developments uh, in East Las Vegas. Absolutely. And so one of those major pieces, too, that we're already so proud that we got funding from the federal government, we got a raise grant for $24 million from the federal government to um basically redo Stewart from 6th Street all the way to Nellis. And what does that mean? That we get to actually put some thought and intentionality and completing streets where sidewalks have not been there continuously. Uh, There's still gravel. Pieces, there's pieces. Uh There's still parts and pieces all down Stewart where you don't have a continuity in the sidewalk where we're going to get more tree and tree uh, canopy and Mm -hmm. shade. Um, We're going to get some bike lanes that are hopefully dedicated and hopefully buffered from traffic because we need to be better drivers and like knowing that the roads are shared and that we need to watch our speed and we need to look not only for um, folks that are walking, but also that are biking. And so um, we're just trying to lift all of Stewart from those, you know, from six to Nellis. And um, we're looking forward to hopefully having the design done by the end of next year. And and I think that, again, going back to the proper planning, you know, so often we get kind of, I'm, I'm talking about low income Hispanics. We get lumped into, you know, we need handouts and all this. No, we need opportunities. Mm-hmm. We have brilliance in our community. We and have resilience. Resilience. <laughs> well, yeah. and that's part of being brilliant. I mean, they have to figure things out a little differently than others. Just saying. And they do figure it out. And so that that's why they have entrepreneurship. Because they are constantly dealing with the pivot, resiliency, whatever you name you want to call it, they're doing it. And so we have brilliant young people in East Las Vegas that just need an opportunity to show their brilliance. If you give them a little bit of a hand, they'll show you that they can turn that hand into an arm, a body, and much more. Uh, we have it right here at the chamber. We see it. 
We know it exists. We just got to offer those opportunities. Yeah, and this should present a lot of opportunities for small businesses as well uh, because anytime there's growth, it presents opportunity for economic expansion, especially for entrepreneurs. Absolutely, and so um, we hope that part of the footprint for Desert Pines is, again, like a small business incubator Mm -hmm. where we can help through uh, folks like you all at the Extension or the Nevada Grow program out of CSN to have a space there to help people, um, connect them with legitimate folks. Because one thing that I unfortunately see a lot of in our community, Peter, is that uh, they're taken to the cleaners very often by people who promise them that they can um, help them develop their business, but then sometimes they're just kind of um, defrauded and their their life investment is see it here every day gone so we need to just make sure that we're saying hey this is a space you want to come and and figure a path forward and hopefully all of us including the latin chamber will be part of this initiative maybe we have a one-stop shop where they also can get all their questions answered about the intricacies of licensing stay local because i know that that multi layers is is very confusing to mm-hmm. our our hint there. and sometimes scary and sometimes a little bit of scary and mm-hmm. you have immigration issues and so they 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 end up a lot of times doing business not to their best benefit not yeah. doing it the right way paying the right taxes because they don't have the right account yeah or, that's afra- or afraid even to ask the right question or afraid and, yeah. and, and we see that every day and Carlos yeah. and staff do a great job for that I also want to say that I'm hoping to see it see East Las Vegas become a place where non Hispanics want to go to. Absolutely. To get great food, authentic mm-hmm. food and culture. I mean, Chinatown does it. Why can't we? It's true. Why can't we? We definitely do. That's one of the things I do want to talk to the developer about is creating a, pay, a place where everyone who comes to Las Vegas knows that, you know, you go to Chicago, there's La Villita. And every... Little Italy. Yes. Yep. You go to Chinatown. Plaza Alvera in LA, yes. right? And mm-hmm. so how can we make this yes. Desert Pines development the place for people to come and experience Latin America. I'm not going to say just, you know, Latino culture, but all of it, all of it, all of it, embrace it all. And through food and culture, that's a great way of bringing people back together, uniting. So I love it. I yeah. love that idea. Good eats, good dances, that's good right. spaces. <laughs> <laughs> where can the, where can the community go for more information regarding all your initiatives and all that you're doing? They can definitely go to our um, Ward 3 page at the City of Las Vegas. They can follow us on social media at Olivia Diaz LV. On Facebook, we're very active in putting all of our efforts and energies behind certain things. I also wanted to mention that um, as part of our future of East Las Vegas, we're also working on a particular area of, of, um, of the east side as our pilot project for improving our safety, our public safety. You know mm-hmm. that... Sometimes there's some things that need to be addressed. We want to do a pilot project to see if we can steer some CDBG block grant funding from the federal government to help us bolster these efforts because sometimes it does require extra funding. So if I'm going to go make an ask from a captain at downtown area command, hey, I need you to bolster your patrols, he's going to tell me, well, I don't have the bodies, right? right. So how can we figure out solutions and put the best foot forward to help meet our community in hearing their cries saying we need to be, you know, better in public safety. So I wanted to invite you all to also be part of that initiative because it's in your adjacency. And yeah. I just feel like going through that pilot and, and trying to get that assistance um, and that support and just thinking outside of the box. Yeah. How can we all be part of the? And solution? I think it's brilliant. You thinking that way. I think that one of the things that we must do better is is community policing, right? We, our our, our gente, our people need to have um, confidence in talking to their police officers and letting them know what's going on. They're part of the policing, mm-hmm. yeah. And so the more we can get that togetherness, and that's going to come from great leadership who sees it as an important initiative. I mean, we're pushing it here all the time at the chamber, like. Don't be afraid of your police officers. Like, talk to them. Let, but we need to do thing events that brings them together so that our younger generation feel comfortable. feels comfortable in yeah. talking to them. You have no idea what that will do to crime 
if we get a comfort level between nuestra gente, our neighborhoods, and the police officers, mm -hmm. you'll see crime drop because they're going to tell people about what's going on over there. We need more of that. We yeah. do. We do. And uh, we had our very uh, first preliminary meeting yesterday at East Las Vegas Community Center, and we heard it from our own community that there are so many people who are afraid to make that call into our law enforcement, that they don't want to be the ones sounding the alarm bell. They don't want to be the ones yeah. that are getting retaliated yeah. against. Yeah. And we have to change whether how we go about sounding the alarm bell and the anonymity or the... Yes, just, being anonymous. Yes, yep. Yep. not wanting to be revealed. I get it. And, you know, and sometimes the ways that we've been doing things may have to shift and change. And I'm looking optimistic or hopeful that we're getting a new sheriff and that we yeah. can get new initiatives underway to just help build those bridges um, yep. between we, law enforcement and us. Because we know that crime goes rampant where it's being not, not where, reported yes, or underreported. Of, of course. And that's killing our communities and we can't do it that way anymore. I'm on MMAC, which is a multicultural board at Metro. And we're very, listen, we're loud. Like we tell the, the law enforcement, they need to do things differently as well. So we, it's gotta be both, both sides. But it's it's a it's it's work worth doing, and I know you feel that way. So I'm I'm very grateful. What else is important to to the community that we need to know about, and that we can help you do your great work? Um, let's see that we're here as a, an asset to them. That uh, if they're seeing, for example, their street lights aren't working, because right now it's not just the city, but it seems like it's the entire county and region that is suffering from copper theft. So if your mm. lights aren't working in your streets please reach out to the city council so that we can look into on, you know, Eastern between this and this, it's not, they're not on. We're the ones that do that. If you're seeing traffic signals blinking um, really early in the morning for some reason, just make sure you call it into us so we can rectify that four way stop as soon as possible. Sometimes it's a Nevada energy triggered issue. Sometimes it's a, uh, traffic box triggered issues so we just need to make sure that someone's already deployed you guys to can work. route it out yep to, we can route it goes. out okay um where there needs to be increased uh you know pedestrian crossings that's traffic safety is our our lane anything related to sewer that's our lane anything related to business licensing you know is our lane yep. um and one thing i want to see us work a little bit better on is just educating our people because sometimes they buy a space and they want their future business to go into that space but the zoning is very important to yeah. that endeavor and i can tell you that i've had recent heartbreaking conversations with people who want to bring a certain business concept to a space that is not adequately zoned no nor would i in good conscience change the zone because it's uh, in very close proximity to residents so i'm not going to change a professional office space for commercial use because it just doesn't make sense down the road maybe that what they want to bring right then and there it makes sense but then it could be eventually changed into something more intense and um, that wouldn't and fit. now you're deteriorating a neighborhood. Exactly. So I, I just hope that we could do a better job in educating our people or steering them to the right resources. And our city staff can only give you an answer based on how much level of detail you give us. So if you say, yeah. hey, I want to bring a retail shop into this, you know, professional office, but you don't give us all the ins and outs that you're going to do installations or you're going to do yeah. X, it makes it very complicated to give you a straight answer. Mm -hmm. So I just hope that you would also count, call, like find out who that council person for the area you're trying to potentially buy that asset from, check in with a council person and say, hey, right now it's this, would you be willing to approve X? That's always better to do your homework on the front end than having to deal with it on yeah, the back yeah. end when you've already put so much of your time, energy, and money into yeah. something. E so. Even a leasing situation, like don't lease, don't sign a lease for five years until you know you can actually get your license at that location. And yeah. also call us about zoning. public works projects because I can tell you right now in Charleston, my hint there are feeling the restriction and the flow of traffic because mm -hmm. we're working on a storm drain development there. Traffic is reduced to one lane from basically – Eastern in Charleston, kind of heading to Bruce, and it's only going to continue to go up the street because we're trying to mitigate flooding um, and the impacts of flooding when it rains here. And so sometimes people get into these leases and they're in the middle of the project, but these projects can be lengthy. Like mm -hmm. this project won't 
probably go away until 24. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I wish I could say there are some resources or monies that are set aside to make the business whole, but they're not. So be, be kind Just of be do vigilant. your diligence yep. and like reach out to us. We can tell you also, hey, is there a public works project for this road going to go on in the next couple of years i can tell you within two to three years but i don't have a crystal ball something will maybe pop up after but i think i think we just found our uh, next podcast there subject charleston underpass <laughs> flooding i've been here 52 years it has flooded my entire life i know we've and we've tried it's it's a it's difficult true. work yeah. that's a difficult street that everybody it's inherited tough. but now they're Putting these huge culverts, that yeah, are bigger than you and I, Peter, in terms of height and 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 dimensions, and so that will the water will be able to yes, flow and be yes. captured there. And right now, we don't have that, and so we have to feel feel a little bit of pain in order for, for us to get ahead uh, down the road because well, we had some flooding in some neighborhoods that I don't want to see repeated. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, thank you very much for being with us here, Councilwoman Diaz, and uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you all. Um, it's fantastic. Awesome. Any, any, uh, can you give your number and contact information yes, again? Yes, you can always call in to Ward 3 at 702-229-2359, and my fabulous staff will be there to take your call and your inquiries and uh, get you the information you need. Thank you very much. And they do pick up. I've called over there, and they do pick up. <laughs> right that's, away. That's important. That's yes. good. That's good. Well, this has been another episode of the Biz Live podcast. Thank you very much for joining us today. Go do something great in your business.